Hi, it's Slater the Science Toy Maker. These strips of paper wedged in this helicopter, do they look like gliders to you? Let's send it into the troposphere and find out. And it's even possible to fly this strange glider inside on a deflected wave of air. The name, Dihedral Magnus Effect Glider, is long, but it's quick and easy to build. But first, dihedral is the slight upward bend of airplane wings for better flight stability. Without dihedral, the glider slips sideways. Then the Magnus Effect is what makes spinning soccer balls curve as if by magic. Physics Girl did a stellar job of explaining the Magnus Effect in this linked video. Even when the glider is traveling so slowly that it seems like it ought to stall and dive out of the air, the Magnus Effect keeps giving it almost magical lift. And when I fly the dihedral Magnus Effect glider like this, it's called walk-along gliding. The upwardly deflected air lifts the glider as much as gravity pulls it down, similar to the way hang gliders can stay in updrafts for hours, not just glide. I don't want to oversell these. Although the Magnus gliders are easy to make and launch in a helicopter, the trade-off is that they are not very efficient. And paper is actually quite heavy, so they're difficult to launch and fly. Fixed-wing walk-along gliders made of half-millimeter foam are easier to fly. But hey, paper's here and free, so let's make a glider now. To start, you'll need some telephone book paper. Newspaper's a little heavier still, but newspaper can be okay too. All machine paper has a grain, so paper is much stronger one way than the other. I've cut two rectangles out of one phone book page, identical except that one is parallel to the text while the other one is perpendicular to text. When you cantilever them off an edge, this one is clearly more rigid, so we'll cut strips parallel to the text. But test your assumptions. This small newspaper is strong parallel to the text, but this large newspaper is the opposite. The same is true of these two phone books. The strips should be about 25 millimeters wide by 155 millimeters long, or one inch by six inches. To get the dihedral, you fold gently in half. Folding in half before cutting means less cutting. It also ensures symmetrical halves so it'll glide better. You can save a lot of time by folding and cutting lots of gliders at once. But another fold will make it stronger. Origami people say that this is a valley fold. Make a gentle mountain fold perpendicular to this first fold. Then mostly unbend it. That hint of a fold makes it less floppy and creates a crude airfoil that helps the glide a little. If you have too much dihedral angle, then it will not fly. Just a little. If you're sending up gliders as a payload in a helicopter, slide three or four under the rubber band at the bottom. The rubber band ejects them as it unwinds. See this link to learn more about the Dragonfly helicopter and how to launch gliders. If you want to try walk-along gliding, your first hurdle is launching. Your glider should glide away from you, not toward you. Hold the glider from the back like this. There's only slight dihedral. Give a short push, really just a tiny flick of the wrist, and let go. You can also try launching like this. The bigger your board is, the better. The top of a pizza box works well. Hold the board almost vertical. It has to slant a lot to deflect air up. Launch high, keep the glider level with the top of the board. 
keep the board so close to the glider that it almost blows over the top. To gain altitude, make the top of the board so close to the glider that it goes over the top. Notice how it went higher just before going over. So this time raise the board so the glider can't go over. It gains altitude instead. Try pulses of getting closer to see where the sweet spot is. You turn by pushing one side of the board closer to one side of the glider. You cannot make sharp turns with this glider, and fast moves don't work. Keep your board smooth and steady. I learned to fly with a similar Magnus glider, and I struggled for weeks before getting it. It takes a long time for pioneers who charge ahead without anyone to show them how to fly. Flying the glider is like riding a bike. It takes time and practice to learn, then gets easier. Let's tip our hats to John Collins, a.k.a. the paper airplane guy, for inventing the first Magnus Effect paper glider, which he calls the tumbling wing. Very humid air makes paper limp and useless. Dihedral Magnus Effect gliders made from thin slices of foam are not affected by humidity, and they're so light that they fly slowly. In fact, I can fly them with just my hands deflecting the air. You can have a single piece of North American standard foam from sciencetoymaker.org cut in half and sliced into 13 millimeter or half inch strips. They're very easy to make, but they're still tricky to launch. Besides being delicate, you need to handle them very gently. The foam gliders are even more sensitive to how much dihedral you have. If the glider seems to slide or it keeps tipping over like this, then you need more dihedral. If the glider is clunky or won't glide at all, then less dihedral. There's not much difference between too much and not enough, so you'll have to experiment. Foam fixed wing gliders are easier to launch but harder to make. You're flying, girl. You're flying. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> 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 Went into the sun.